WPTV Treasure Coast News starts now. Tonight on this first day of early voting on the Treasure Coast, an in-depth look at what voters will weigh in on. And the housing market is making it hard for first-time owners to afford a mortgage, but a new program is helping people on the Treasure Coast buy homes for a fraction of the price. Good evening and welcome to Treasure Coast News on WPTV News Channel 5 each Saturday at 7 p.m. You can join us right here for dedicated coverage of stories and issues in and around the Treasure Coast from Stewart to Sebastian. First, we begin tonight with our weather and the increased <laughs> rain threat this weekend. First alert meteorologist Kate Wenzel is in with your Saturday evening forecast. Kate. Hey, John. Yeah, what a difference a day makes. We knew eventually we'd get a day like this, but it's been quite a while as pretty much the last couple of weeks, everything's been ending up on the west side of the Sunshine State. Here's a little time lapse from Jonathan Dickinson State Park, and you can see the raindrops on the camera lens right there. And we had some peaks of blue and then some more rain came through. So uh, several rounds of rain. Things are weakening now, but this is the loop. So we saw uh, some pretty good heavy downpours across across the region had some strong storms. Nothing turned severe, uh, but we did have some reports of wind gusts close to about 40 miles per hour. So let's go ahead and zoom in. Now you can see light rain uh, pretty much along I-95 and the turnpike and points eastward, but the storms now out over the Atlantic waters and uh, some storms, not some storms, but some rain across edges of Okeechobee County. And here's a little shower uh, just to the northwest of Bassinger. So the Overall trend tonight will be for weakening, but we're still tracking some activity, and I think the latest activity uh, will be across Okeechobee County. Then try, dry overnight, we get a break, but tomorrow afternoon we are expecting another round of showers and storms. Once again, some of the storms could be strong with gusty winds, small hail, and torrential rain, and then we wind things down through your Sunday evening. Boy, we need the rain. Uh, don't like it when it comes on a Saturday, but at this point we'll take it when we can get it because as you can see, when West Palm more than nine inches below uh, average Fort Pierce nearly six inches below average and Vero Beach uh, approaching eight and a half inches below average for this time of year. So definitely needing the rain. Rain chances will be coming down through the overnight hours and then ramping back up for your Sunday afternoon. Stay tuned. I'll have your hour by hour forecast plus what you can expect for the work week ahead. Election supervisors on the Treasure Coast tell us they are ready for early voters for the primary election, which got underway today. And you don't have to be a Republican or Democrat to vote on items related to community issues that will be on the ballot. Megan McRoberts shows us what voters are deciding in Martin and St. Lucie County. Early voters on the Treasure Coast can begin casting their ballots Saturday. And while in Florida, only Republicans and Democrats can vote for most candidates, there are some ballot items that all registered voters can weigh in on. That includes some school board and local commission races, but also items that decide how your tax dollars are spent. Voters in Martin County will see a ballot item asking them whether they want to extend an up to half millage increase on property taxes to support schools. It originally passed in 2018 as a four year initiative, but the school district said in a statement that if the millage increase is not extended, the district would see a $47 million reduction in revenue over the next four years, adding that the millage funds critical operational needs, including salary stipends for teachers and support personnel that allow us to remain competitive with neighboring districts. And that referendums are the sole remedy we are able to pursue to make up for needs that state funding doesn't cover. The district said if the board finds it does not need the full half mil proposed, it would not assess and collect the full amount. Uh, on the ballot itself, it says yes for continuation, mm -hmm. no not to continue. In St. Lucie County, voters will see an item to decide whether or not new businesses in the county in Fort Pierce should get a tax break. It was first uh, approved by the voters in 1992. It has to be renewed by the voters every 10 years. So this will be the fourth time that it is up for renewal and we're asking voters to consider approving it. Port St. Lucie already voted on this last year, so St. Lucie County and Fort Pierce now have a say. It's a small tax break for corporations that are willing to expand their business here or relocate here. So regardless of party, supervisors of elections encouraging all voters to have a say on impactful local races and items. There are many races on the ballot that are going to be decided at the local level. Um, they're not going on to the general ballot. Megan McRoberts, WPTV News Channel 5. 
And for a list of early voting locations and everything else you need to know for the primary, head to our website, WPTV.com. Click on the Voter Guide tab on the top of the page, and we've made it easy for you to get there. You can just scan that QR code on your screen. Indian River Shores is getting a new council member next month. Chris Hendricks resigned last week after two years on the job. Our partners at TC Palm say he moved to Arizona due to family obligations. The council will appoint his successor to serve until the 2024 general election. Home ownership is out of reach for many in our area, but a new program aims to fix that one home at a time. This week, I met two new happy homeowners in Port St. Lucie. I've waited for this for so long and it finally happened. Colette Kemmer is still taking it all in. I can finally have my friends over to my place. She spent her first night in this brand new Port St. Lucie home just two days ago after renting a room in Jensen Beach for the past seven years. Did you ever think you would own a home? Um, one day, but I didn't know when because of the prices of the homes were going up and I was like, this is never going to happen for me. The price tag for this new three bedroom, two bath home with impact windows, doors and outdoor space. I'm going to get a doggy. Just over $130,000. Kemmer, a local health care worker, was one of four first time home buyers given the keys through a new affordable housing program in Port St. Lucie. You know, it's really exciting to be able to bring these opportunities. Cindy LaCourse Bloom is the executive director of the Community Land Trust of Palm Beach County and the Treasure Coast, which partnered with the city. And one of the unique things about this program is that you had to work or live in Port St. Lucie. Federal grant money helped fund these homes for low to moderate income residents who met minimum credit score levels and attended a seminar on home ownership. When the home is resold, it's only sold to another income eligible buyer for another affordable price. Amy Rogers, a 28 year St. Lucie County Schools employee. Everything was out my limit. Had been looking to buy for 10 years. I always wanted the house and so it was always something that I was working forward to and this just was the perfect perfect program for me. When she found out she was chosen in a lottery out of the more than 400 qualified applicants to get her new home, she had to pinch herself. I hate to do a reality check. <laughs> it's a life-changing feeling Kemmer can relate to. My mom wants to come for a month because she's retired. She can come for a month and she could stay in here. Now she just needs to find the right place for all her elephants. Trunks pointed to the sky are said to bring good luck. It means a lot to me and I've wanted this for the longest time and I'm just so grateful that I got this. Two more new homeowners will close and get their keys at the end of September. As the economy struggles through record inflation and many cut back to stay ahead, some hotels on the Treasure Coast taking a hit this summer. TC Palm reporting occupancy numbers were slightly down in May and June compared to the same months last year. It comes after hotels posted a strong spring. Tourism leaders believe high gas prices and other economic pressures kept many people away over the summer. With only one month into a new law that prohibits loud music from a car, Treasure Coast law enforcement are already citing violators. TC Palm's top premium story this week looks into Florida's newest anti-loud music law and how local law enforcement officials are enforcing it. The law prohibits music coming from a vehicle turned up so loud it is, quote, plainly audible from 25 feet away. There are even more restrictions on blaring music near churches, schools, and hospitals. Local law enforcement say they try to educate and give people time to adjust to new laws like this, but the Port St. Lucie Police Department has already issued two warning citations since the law first took effect on July 1st. Assistant Chief Richard Del Toro said loud music presents quality of life and safety issues. The state Supreme Court threw out a similar law about 10 years ago. But the reason given for the new law is because drivers may not hear emergency vehicle sirens if music is too loud. Some local residents told TC Palm they disagree with the new law. Regardless, Mark Carrasco, service manager at Hot Wheels in Port St. Lucie, is advising customers of the new law so they don't violate it. The law is a primary non-criminal traffic infraction that carries a $114 fine. For more exclusive Treasure Coast stories like this, visit tcpalm.com slash premium. I'm executive editor Adam Neal for TC Palm. This week, students return to the classroom and safety is on everyone's mind. After the break, a look at how law enforcement prepped for their first day back. 
Plus, crews putting the finishing touches on an intersection considered one of the more dangerous on the Treasure Coast. The major improvements now in place and how family members of crash victims are reacting. And it certainly was an active day on the radar. We're starting to quiet down now, but what is on tap for your Sunday? I'll have your hour by hour forecast coming up after the break. This is WPTV Treasure Coast News. With the new school year well underway, safety is top of mind, and the tragic reality of school shootings has put added emphasis on the roles of resource officers and school police. I spoke with two officers in Port St. Lucie as they prepare to keep your kids safe this school year. So for me here, it's home. On the eve of a new school year, Officer Adrian Peterzak is ready, ready to listen to the kids as they flood the courtyard at St. Lucie West Centennial High School. Now I'm like the manager of this mini city that I have to keep safe. Aware that recent history has heightened her role. We do participate in active threat training. Before it would be, I'm here, if you need me, come find me. Now I'm out in the open and I'm watching and paying attention to the everyday activities of the school. And when she steps on campus, the present and past merge. I really enjoyed my high school time. Peter Zack was part of the first graduating <laughs> class at Centennial in 2000, captain of the soccer team, and it was the presence of an SRO on campus that got her interested in police work. The last time I taught, I taught about all the different jobs in law enforcement. And here she also teaches a criminal justice class. For these SROs, it's not just their physical presence to protect the exterior of the campus. It's also the work that they do inside the campus walls. At Treasure Coast High School, Officer Amanda McCarty has found her passion helping kids, especially those that may need extra help. What really drives me is when I have the positive interactions with children, when they actually see me as a person, not just as a police officer. She's heavily involved with the TCHS school pantry. A clerk here at the school, Della, she had a passion about helping other students. Sometimes families cannot make it right now. So it is nice for us to be able to help those kids. She says the partnership with the SROs from the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office are crucial. And as a mother, she assures other parents that she'll keep a close watch on her school. And that's our goal every day is to keep this campus safe. Another place where safety is a priority, school zones. And after a series of first day accidents, Port St. Lucie police are stepping up their response. They say they issued more than 50 citations and warnings to drivers earlier this week. Police say they see a lot of morning drivers getting distracted because they're on their phones and eating breakfast. Their, their fault, some that just flat didn't notice that it was a, a, a school zone yet. Um, some that were unaware that school had restarted and Others just felt the need to argue. Now remember, school zone hours are both in the morning and the afternoon. Fines are doubled if you're caught speeding, so keep an eye out for those flashing signs when you hit the road. Well, an intersection considered one of the most dangerous in St. Lucie County is getting the final touches on some major safety improvements, something families and county leaders have been asking the state to do for years. The improvements are being made at the intersection of Okeechobee and Midway Roads west of Fort Pierce. Megan McRobert shows you the improvements and how family members of those car crash victims are reacting. Well, thank everybody. It's made it a safer road. Stuart Fakita given the honor of cutting the ribbon to showcase safety improvements made at the intersection where his teen daughter and her best friend were killed more than four years ago. Safety improvements he's waited for for years and county leaders have waited for for decades. Stewart met me out at Santia Fakita and Brittany Lee Poindexter's roadside memorial. Would I have preferred to see a stoplight here a long time ago? Yes. County leaders Obviously announcing FDOT must. is wrapping up a $300,000 state funded project with the final addition of adding three way stoplights at the intersection of Midway Road and Okeechobee Road. At the time of the teenagers crash in 2018, there was only a stop sign for one direction. An elderly wrong way driver without his lights on hit the girls head on. The thing is there was no lighting on the intersection at Midway Road and, and Okeechobee Road. So that's another change. Now 15 street lights have been installed. A turning lane has also been widened to improve visibility before turning and illuminated pavers are added to the road. County leaders say another couple was killed here in 2019, but the first catalyst for change was the death of nine year old Aaron Beauchamp in 2012 killed in a school bus crash. It is a beacon of safety 
for an intersection that has taken far too many lives. But even with the new lights up, we drove up on a crash hours before the ribbon cutting by someone running the red lights. I witnessed two accidents this week. Um, both people ran red lights. A reminder that all the safety improvements in the world only do so much. Now it's up to the public to follow the laws. Megan McRoberts, WPTV News Channel 5. It has been a mostly dry week, but the rain, Kate, returning today. Yeah, you said it, John. I mean, it didn't just come back a little bit. We had some pretty good downpours, lightning, uh, had a flood advisory, all that stuff earlier. Things are starting to wind down now. Well, this was sunrise this morning. Uh, Jensen Beach, really pretty there at 7 a.m. And uh, it turned out to be a decent afternoon for a while. A lot of folks enjoying the beach, but then the rain started to come in and boom, no one's on the beach. But uh, as we head throughout the evening hours, few more folks came came out and kind of a mixed sky right now. We did make it up all the way to 95 degrees today in Vero Beach, which ties the record set back in 1963. So a very hot day before those storms started. Right now we have some rain cooled air, so it's 78 degrees in Port St. Lucie, 77 Okeechobee, 78 Fort Pierce and Stewart. Right now you're checking in at 79 degrees. Now the winds uh, variable right now, but notice southwesterly winds in Stewart in Okeechobee, Vero Beach, Southeast Fort Pierce, but with a kind of a westerly steering flow, we saw more activity on the East Coast today. So this is a radar loop uh, about six hours takes you from early afternoon through right now. So things are winding down. We still have some light rain across eastern Martin County. The strong storm is pushing offshore. Few showers now pushing into western Martin County right there on uh, the fringe of Lake Okeechobee, as well as a few showers to the north and Northwest of Bassinger, but for the most part, the models show us winding down over the next couple hours. Some lingering showers across Okeechobee County. We dry out overnight, then tomorrow afternoon. Once again, we'll start to see some activity, mainly from about uh, anywhere from three to I'd say nine o'clock at night, and then once again, we'll start to wind things down. So another good chance of rain for your Sunday at times. Some storms could be strong. You see we quiet out uh, overnight and then by 11 a.m. back up to a 30% chance of some showers. So hour by hour forecast showing those temperatures uh, winding down into the upper 70s through about 1 a.m. and we should be mainly dry after 10 o'clock. Now tomorrow will be hot high temps uh, near 90 heat indices close to 100. So we have the heat, we have the humidity and we have the storm. Sounds like pretty much August in South Florida. Now rain chances gradually go up on Monday and then down a little bit Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday tonight 77 degrees. We will have winds out of the south at 10. Then tomorrow high temperature of 92 degrees. Afternoon storms will be likely for the boaters outside of any afternoon storms. The sea is minimal just around one foot. Inland waters a light chop and here is your first alert. Seven day forecast temp staying in the low 90s and after Monday uh, we dial back the rain chances to around 40 and 50%. Here are your Treasure Coast Sports highlights with the ESPN 106.3 sports team. What's going on, everybody? Tyree Smith from ESPN 106.3. Kickoff classics get underway next week in our area, and some local teams, they're making sure they're ready to tackle the 2022 season. The tradition prep Pirates are getting set for their first season of varsity football. Last year, they only participated in JV. With the roster of 44 players, the Pirates are looking to open some eyes this year. For example, their first two regular season games are against American Heritage and John Carroll. A tough two-game stretch, which is exactly what they want. We ain't put together a, an easy schedule for, on purpose. We, we want them to know that we ain't scared. We're going to show up. We want, we want to play the best teams out there, and then the expectation is to be that team. You know, we don't want to sit there. We don't want to be the average school. We don't want to be the average team. We want to show out and be, be the best team out there and, and get the respect that the area deserves. Staying in Port St. Lucie, the Port St. Lucie Jaguars are looking to build off their success from last year. That included the team winning the district title for the first time in over 30 years. They return key pieces to the program, such as their quarterback and entire secondary. With an older team, they look to make another run at the district title and 
go beyond that. The anticipation of this upcoming season is big for our kids, you know, doing something that the school hasn't done and the football team hasn't done in, you know, over 30 years. So just the anticipation of getting back on the field and trying to do it again. And, and that's our goal is to go back to back, uh, be district champs, make the playoffs again, but not just be satisfied with making the playoffs, but actually try to push for a next round playoff game. And that's the look of sports. Okeechobee's only no-kill animal shelter will soon be closing its doors Why a volunteer says they can no longer afford to keep serving the community. The death of a man found buried in the sand in Martin County is being called a tragic accident. The man discovered by his feet poking out of the sand. Treasure Coast News' Todd Wilson spoke with investigators about what they suspect happened along Hutchinson Island near the House of Refuge on a recent morning. Rock Beach in Martin County is beautiful. You could hear the ocean slam against the rocks that litter the beach. Yet Sunday morning, the Martin County Sheriff's Office says someone saw a man's feet sticking out of a pile of sand. And it was an unusual scene with just feet st sticking out of the sand. And then, of course, we had to dig down, found the body. The autopsy did reveal some sand in his lungs. The man who died is 35-year-old Sean Nagel. I was told by the Martin County Sheriff's Office that Nagel's death is a tragic accident. Sheriff William Snyder says Nagel was the type of guy to get up early in the morning and come down to the beach, set up a GoPro, sit back and watch the sunrise. At the time of his death, Snyder says it was around 5 or 6 in the morning and Nagel had his legs up and was leaning back on some sand when it collapsed. He says Nagel was found roughly three hours later by someone who noticed his feet sticking out of the sand. Somehow while he was there, inexplicably, we don't know why, that, that beach erosion mountain of sand collapsed on him and obviously was unable to to get out and he expired cause of death is asphyxiation todd wilson wptv news channel five the only no-kill animal shelter in okeechobee county says it has no choice but to close its doors next week trail of hope is now desperately trying to find homes for its remaining animals the owners are pleading with the community to consider adopting before it's too late it's really tough we've been part of the community and the community is just everybody's having a hard time now trail of hope will officially close its doors august 19th they're offering discounted adoptions of 150 dollars until then we've shared a link on our website to the shelter's facebook page showing all of the remaining adoptable dogs a critically endangered fish becoming a more common sight in the st lucie river tc palms reporting there have been more than a dozen small tooth sawfish catches this year biologists now question whether there's a nursery in the area due to the uptick in reports sawfish have been on the endangered species list since 2013 and experts say the best place to see one is in southwest florida they are really neat when you see one. I mean, it's it's very unusual. It's it's kind of like, what is that? Yeah, what is that, is that thing, right? <laughs> very that, that and the hammerhead. You got your whole uh, two box of sharks, if you will. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, hey, tomorrow, if you do want to maybe do some scuba diving or snorkeling or swimming, probably the morning is when you want to get outside. That's the best chance to have some dry conditions, maybe some sunshine too, before those afternoon storms start to pop. And some of those could be strong Monday rain likely and then uh, we dial back a little bit as we head into Tuesday down to 50% Wednesday through Saturday a 40% chance of scattered storms highs in the low 90s but you know I know that this is kind of a um, borderline washout weekend now we did see some sunshine today some folks got to the beach but uh, even though we don't like the rain on the weekend we're to the point John where we just need to you take it when we rain. can get it because uh, we'd rather have rainy days than uh, brush fires breaking out everywhere. That so. we don't need. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> Catch us again next Saturday as we highlight the diversity of the beautiful Treasure Coast. You can find more stories about what's happening on WPTV.com. Click the Treasure Coast link at the top of the homepage. We'll see you back here tonight at 11.